بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ما بعد باب ما جاء في الرقى والتمائم chapter what has come regarding الرقى يعني incantations and التمائم amulets this was preceded by the chapter uh, for he who um, will kindly remind us of the previous chapter. What was the title of the previous chapter? Nah. Explanation of Tawheed. Was that the previous chapter? Mahmoud? Nah. Anyone, you, you're, you're right. Anyone remember the title specifically? Mm -hmm. So, Mina Shirk, Lipsul Halqa. This was the previous chapter. From Shirk, from ascribing partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to wear a ring. Wal khayt. What's khayt? Khayt. Twine. I'm also twine. Even these words need. String or a cord, anything of this type. Wanahrihima and other than them, Liraf'il Bala in order to remove Bala uh, an affliction of some sort, or Daf'i, or to remove it. So anything that's taken from uh, a ring of some sort or a twine which is placed on a person's self, his or her body, or elsewhere. <clears throat> As we explained in the previous lesson, it is not necessary that that thing is placed on the body. It can be placed uh, in the house or in the car, and so on. That, that, that it, all of these things are from a shirk. Not to go through all of that barb again, but this chapter that we now find ourselves before then it is closely connected to the previous chapter. This chapter, as we read, is titled Ma Ja'a Fir Ruqa Wa Tamaim. What has come uh, regarding incantations and amulets. Daib, <clears throat> anyone want to have a go at the Munasaba, the relevance and the connection between these two chapters? So the connection between this chapter. And the previous one. Any brave souls? No? That's why he sits at the front. He's brave. Similar. Similar. No, I sense, yes. Correct. Similar in what way? Ah, used on the body. Only on the body? The previous chapter we mentioned how. It's not specific to the body. No. No, all of them are stunt, yes. Again, they're, they're, all of these things are there to prevent some harm, but not just to prevent, as we said, look at the previous chapter. Only defai. Rafi, to remove it once it's afflicted, whatever that may be, evil eye, uh, uh, poisonous sting. Uh, magic and so on those things many people they partake in these things or engage themselves in these actions placing these things on themselves or other than themselves in order to re uh, to remove the affliction once it's come to them but also to prevent it from the in the first place so yeah, and it's not the case that these things are only placed on themselves, on their children, these tamaim, these amulets, and that which the people know as taweez in yani, the language of our, many of our people. It, it, not, it is not specific to them 
placing these things once an affliction has taken place, but many of them in order to prevent it in the first place, before it even comes, before they're afflicted by the evil eye and so on. Now, here the munas about the relevance and the connection to the previous chapter, and here you're going to see the diqqa and the precise knowledge of this Imam when he wrote this book. In the previous chapter, he said he began and he said, Mina Shirk. It is from Shirk. And he mentioned those affairs. But in this chapter, he says, Ma ja'a What has come regarding Arruqa, incantations and attamam and amulets? Because there's tafsil here with Ruqa. There's detail. Some of it is allowed. So we don't say it is from Shirk. That is, that's why he didn't put this in the previous chapter. He, he, he said what, what has come concerning a ruqa because we know from ruqya from incantations that which has come that which has come and that which is not shirk but rather it is it has come in the Quran it has come in the sunnah and it is mushru' legislated now so that is the uh, reason why the imam bought this chapter immediately after because it's connected to the previous chapter no doubt it is clear it is a completion of that chapter and because there's this detail here. Now, so the first, the first evidence that the Imam brings under this chapter is uh, that which has come in the Sahih. That which has come in the Sahih. And Abi Bashir al-Ansari. Now, radiyallahu anhu, أنه كان مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في بعض أصفاره. He mentioned how he was with the messenger of Allah during some of his travels. نعم. فأرسل رسولا. So during one of these travels, he sent a messenger. The messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he sent a messenger. So he sent a man as a messenger. نعم. And he said to him. أن لا يبقى ين في رقبة بعير قلادة من وتر أو قلادة إلا قطعت. Let there not remain any necklace of a bowstring of bowstring. وتر قلادة قلادة من وتر Water, my brothers, is that, that string that is used on a bow. You know the string that they use on the bow to pull, that, pull back the arrow? That string from a bow. That's water. Qilada, a necklace. So, let there not remain a necklace of a bowstring. Oh, qilada. And here now, qilada. A necklace of any sort round the necks of camels. Illa quti'at. Again, so here the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that let there not remain a necklace of bowstring, of a bowstring, uh, or any other kind of necklace round the necks of camels, except that it is cut off. So this is the first uh, hadith that the Imam he brings here. Naam. Naam. And we're going to look at what Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ibn Baz rahimahullah he mentioned here. Or yeah, and he summarizes after working through a number of these evidences. So we'll go ahead and continue reading. Uh, but just here just so you can see by way of visual uh, an, an example of that. So on the next slide you can see here it's an example that which they would do, as you can see for those who can see the screen, um, that which the Arab would do, and that is that after they would use the bow during many battles, when it was time for the string to be replaced, they would remove it, and then they would place them as necklaces around their camels and horses. Uh, in order to ward off evil eye and, uh, and so on and to protect their animals this is a belief that they, that they held that 
يعني somehow according to them according to their beliefs this wards off uh, prevents uh, the evil eye or يعني, um, harm coming to their animals so this is something they would do نعم. so that, that is an example this is what is meant in the hadith قلادة من وتر نعم. then the imam he brings his next evidence and that is from Ibn Mas'ud his first name Abdullah Abdullah Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu قال he said سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he said I heard the messenger of Allah saying in الرقى so الرقى my brothers is the plural, plural of رقيا in الرقى Incant, indeed, incant, incantations. What tamaim? Tamaim is the plural, plural of tamima. Tamima. Now, so tamaim and tamaim, tamima is referring to amulets, amulets, or talismans, referred to also in English. Another name for tamaim in Arabic, and this is where you see where the word talisman comes from, is Talasim. Talasim. So talismans is taken. It's from it's, it's the same thing. Now. What tiwala? Tiwala. Yani spells of bewitchment. Charms. So here the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned three things. He said, Ruqa, incantations, tamaim, amulets, talismans. And at-tiwala, at-tiwala, referring to spells and bewitchment and the likes. <clears throat> shirk, very simple and clear hadith, shirk. These things are a shirk, polytheism. Yani, <clears throat> acts of ascribing partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. And that was recorded by Imam Ahmed. And Abu Dawood. <clears throat> the next evidence is followed by an explanation from the Imam concerning these three things. So, and we'll leave the explanation to that because the Imam himself he explains these things. And then, as we mentioned, we'll, we'll look at the explanation of Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ibn Baza. Now, so the next evidence the Imam he brings is from Abdullah ibn Uqaym Abdullah ibn Uqaym radiallahu anhu from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said man ta'allaqa shay'an wukila ilay whoever hangs a talisman whoever hangs a talisman or as you can see here the word shay'an has come so anything Whoever hangs anything yani, with that intent, with the same intent of yani, uh, those who place amulets and so on, will be left in charge of that thing. Will be left in charge of that thing. Now, so here now the Imam, in his kitab, he works through these three matters. Sheikh, he mentioned concerning at tamam So after bringing these evidences, he says, at tamam shay'un yu'allaq ala al-awlaad min al ain This is the origin. That at tamam singular being tamima, is whatever is placed on children by means of which they seek protection from the evil eye. Now, this is what Tama'im is referring to in its origin, that which people would place um, around their children in order to protect them from the evil eye. Now, لكن إذا كان المعلق من القرآن فرخص فيه بعد الصلف The Imam continues and he says, however, if whatever is hung 
around the child or around whoever is from the Quran, then some, some, not all, some of the Salaf allowed this. And some of them did not allow it. So from them who allowed it, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, it's been narrated uh, from them. However, there's yeah, any, uh, a question or a question mark as to whether that is established on them. But from them, those who were strongly against it, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and uh, his, his companions and those around him, um, such as Alqama and uh, Ibrahim, Ibrahim al Nakhai, and others. And so this is what the Imam is making clear here that some allowed the Tama'im, which contained something from the Quran, contained verses from the Quran, and some of them didn't allow it. And we're going to come to the correct position in that, the stronger position in that. Now, but the Imam he says, uh, and so some, the, the latter, those who, who didn't allow it, then they included even that. Those tamaim, which include verses of the Quran, they included that into the prohibition. The prohibition of what? What has come in the, in the evidence, in that hadith. That ar-ruqa in ar-ruqa. tamaim. With tewala shirk. They included even those amulets that contain verses from the Quran, they included that in the prohibition. Now, that is what the Imam is referring to here. Minhum ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. From them was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. Now, al ruqa the Imam, he continues and he says, al ruqa is that which is referred to as incantations in English. Yani, Azaim in Arabic, but incantations in English, spells and charms uh, and the like. A charm, usually in English, what comes to mind is what? Some kind of amulet, right? A charm. But the meaning in its origin, even in English, is it could be words, words that are uttered to, to bewitch some, to, to, uh, to, um, to, to, to cast a spell, to cast a spell. Now, um, so here the Imam says there is allowed from them, from these incantations, that which the, the evidence has exempted, has excluded from the prohibition. And those incantations, those ruqa, which are free from shirk which are free from shirk. Naam. That is due to the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, allowing, allowing a ruqya. We know, we covered this. He allowed ruqya to be performed from um, yani being bitten, or when a person is bitten by poisonous insects, by a scorpion or a snake and the likes, or from the evil eye. Or from the evil eye. Now, um, and also due to the clear hadith, which the Imam doesn't bring here, but this is outside of the text of the book. However, a clear hadith in this regard, and we've included it here um, for your information. And that is the saying of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, He said, اعرضوا علي رقاكم لا بأس بالرقى ما لم يكن فيه شرك. Translation of which is Submit your spells to me And he said to the Sahaba When they said that We used to make ruqya in jahiliyyah So the messenger of Allah وسلم, He said Present your incantations to me I'radu alayya ruqakum Display them to me Present them Submit them to me Let me hear them And then he said La ba'sa bir ruqa there is no harm with a ruqa in spells, incantations, ma lam yukun fihi shirk, so long as there's no shirk within them. Naam, and that was recorded by Imam Muslim and other than Imam Muslim. 
Naam. And so here we see that there's an exemption here in Ruqa. Ruqa in totality isn't shirk. Like we took in the previous chapter. And hence why the Imam, he brought it here under this heading uh, where he said, Ma ja'a, what has come concerning Ruqa and Tamaim. Now, Imam moved, moves on to Atiwala. Atiwala, yani the witchman. He said, in explanation of this, Shay'un yasna'unahu yaz'amun annahu yuhabbib al-mar'a ila zawjiha wal-rajul ila mra'atih. It is something they do, yani it's spells that they yani they come with or they perform by way of which they claim to bring about love between a woman and her husband or vice versa yani a woman go goes to, to these people who participate who, who yani indulge in these matters and yani um, claim to bring about these matters by way of their spells and so on when she seeks love she wants her husband to love her or when the man the husband he sees that he's in he's in need of this spell so his wife loves him and we're going to see as an example i mentioned last week in the previous lesson that we were going to go through some examples but uh, i forgot and no one reminded me but if i forget again at the end of this we will see some examples there today we see these things are not just yani, the affair has come to uh, the um, the absence of a person having to go to find these people and to go out far and wide to find these people who can do these things but from the comfort of your home on your computer go to eBay go to yani, this website that website and these things uh, available, delivered, first class. Um, and so we're going to see examples of this, something which many uh, partake in, uh, and unfortunately, asif al-shadid, many from the Muslims. Uh, hence, the severe need for us to learn about these matters, to learn about that which opposes the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that which يعني, is shirk. And these matters, just like we mentioned, in the previous chapter, these affairs of hanging talismans, hanging amulets, and these twines and so on, and these incantations and going to these people for these spells and so on, then they are shirk. They are shirk in one of two ways. We explained that last week. Yani how 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 are these affairs shirk? That's the question to revise what we mentioned last week. So, as a, as a recap, a quick recap, not, that, not to, uh, again, to go over in detail what we covered last week, but it's connected to this, to this uh, chapter here. So, in the previous um, chapter, that we, we covered the hadith, man ta'allaqa tamima, Whoever hangs or places an, uh, an amulet, فَقَدْ أَشْرَكْ Then he has committed shirk. What do we say concerning that shirk? Or what did we convey and, and relay from the speech and explanation of Ahlul Ilm concerning that shirk? What type of shirk is it? And in particular, we mentioned the speech of Sheikh Salih Al-Fawzan, Hafizullah Ta'ala. What type of shirk is it? Hmm? Shirk Al-Akbar, the major shirk, expels someone outside of Islam. Ah, now I'm so correct, but we say there's detail, there's detail, either it's major shirk, shirk al-akbar, or it's minor shirk. When is it major shirk? When you solely? Now, so when a person holds that this tamima, this amulet, this twine, and so on, that thing in and of itself is what brings about benefit or wards off harm that is major shirk 
expels a person outside of Islam. No more a Muslim. Tayyib, minor shirk. When does it become minor shirk? Nah, my son, nah. A good answer. When the person who places that amulet or twine, when he holds that it is Allah that is the one who brings about benefit and wards of evil and harm, but he holds that this thing is a means, a means. And here, the scholars, they say that that is, it is not major shirk, it is minor shirk because he has made something a means which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make a means. And because, what does it do? And for Ghalib or for many, it leads to the major shirk. It leads to the major shirk. Naam. And again, remember, although we say minor shirk, don't let it come to your head that it's a minor affair. It's a major sin. And it's greater than the rest of the major sins. It is greater than killing, stealing, committing adultery, and fornication, and so on. Naam. So that is what we mentioned last week, and, and the same applies here with these affairs in this chapter. Now, now, and so here, a Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, he mentioned now after we uh, covered the evidences um, and the explanation of the Imam concerning um, those matters. Uh, the Sheikh he said concerning a tiwala here, he said. Arrafaha al Mu'allif, the author, he, yani he defined it, gave it a definition and explained it. Um, and he said, They, they use the jinn and the devils. These spells, one may ask, how do, how, do they, yani how do they work? They work with the jinn and the devils. These individuals work with the jinn and the devils. And very often, there are people, yani, how is it that the jinn are subservient to them? And these shayateen, how is it that they're subservient to them? Meaning, subservient meaning do as they ask them to do. Why do these jinn, these devils, carry out these matters for these human beings, and these individuals who are requesting from them that they bring about love or they separate also? Remember that there are those who go to these people, these magicians, Seeking not just to bring about love. Yes, some people go to them to bring about love. But also some go for the opposite. Which is to, to destroy a marriage. To destroy a marriage. And, and it's coming in Surah Al-Baqarah concerning Suleiman. يعني, وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانْ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا يُعَلِّمُونَ مَاذَا الناس السحر. They teach, the, يعني, meaning the, the angels. The angels that were sent as a fitna. The angels that were sent, that Allah Taala sent to the people as a trial, as a fitna. Allah tests the servants however he wills. And they taught the people a sihr. يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسِ السِّحْرَةِ مَا مَاذَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ They would teach the people that which would separate a man from his wife. Naam. So, this is here what the Sheikh is alluding to that they do things alongside with the jinn and the devils. From those things, they sacrifice. They sacrifice for them. They glorify them. They glorify the leaders of these jinn and these, 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 these um, evil and misguided jinn. And shayateen. Naam. We summon her sihr. And likewise, yani this tiwala and that which um, yani the Imam explained tiwala to be is also referred to as sihr. So, yani, all maradif and words, synonyms for the same yani affair. A tiwala, bewitchment, spells, magic, and sihr. So it is referred to as sihr. Kadalik al ataf. And it is, Al-Ataf is like to, to bring something together. 
to bring something together. And so here, in the, yani in the instance of when a man seeks to bring about love, um, and, and, and that this spell brings about love between him and his wife, he's seeking to bring his wife and him together. Now, uh, was sarf, it is also known, referred to as sarf. Uh, Naam, kulluhu kufr. Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, he says, all of it is kufr. All of it is disbelief. Uh, due to the uh, ayah, the verse that we refer to, innama nahnu fitna fala takfur. This is what the angels, they said. Innama nahnu fitna. We are only a, a trial for you. Fala takfur. So do not disbelieve. Naam. Um, Kedalik, <clears throat> Sheikh Ibn Abbas, he says here that it is, it is befitting for a person that he relies upon Allah alone. And he is the one that he believes that Allah is the one who can bring about benefit for him and ward of harm along with taking the means. Along with taking the means, the, the legislative means and as it's come in the hadith ihras ihras ala ma 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 yanfa'uk musta'in billah yani um, be persistent in um, carrying out that which will benefit you yani take the means go towards that which will benefit you strive to carry out that which will benefit you musta'in um, billah and seek Allah's aid so take the means and rely on Allah. Now, uh, so the Sheikh he says, taking the means is an affair that is lazim. It is necessary. Whether that is, um, يعني, to take medicines, um, or other than that, whether that is to seek provisions, then a person must take the means. And from the means, those which are wajib, obligatory, and those which are ja'iz, those which are ja'iz, allowed. So medicines, is from them, the scholars, they say medicines, that's from the means which are allowed. A person can choose to, yeah, and if he, if he becomes sick, falls ill, he's allowed to remain patient. It's not wajib for him to take, the, take medicine. It is not wajib. It is allowed for him to withhold and remain patient in order to seek the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are those from the, the Sahaba who, who do as such. So this is what the Imam is referring to. So the Shaykh, he says that upon a person is to take the means, those which are permissible and allowed and those which are obligatory. Important point, my brothers and sisters, that taking these means does not does not taint a person's tawheed bal tarkuha yaqdah fi al-aql wa at-tawheed jami'an shaykh says rather abandoning the means than that yani um then that blemishes if you like um a person's a tawheed and a person's intellect now because and it's something which, which, which we all understand that you have to take the means you have to take the means now and so the sheikh he says the Sheikh, he says about the tama'im which Im involve those amulets that include and consist of verses from the Qur'an. He says that although some from them, meaning from the Salaf, allowed it, such as Abdullah ibn Amr, there are others who prevented it and did not allow it, such as Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and it is what is correct. And it is what is correct due to what the evidences point towards. And this is likewise the position of Ash Shaykh Ibn Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah, and likewise Ash Shaykh Saleh Al Fawzan. Now, all of them, they acknowledge and recognize that from the Salaf, those who allow Tama'im, which, which, in, 
included verses from the Quran. We're not talking about tamaim in, in general they allowed them. No. Tamaim, amulets, which يعني, consist of that which يعني, is not Quran. All of them agreed that that is haram, not allowed. Here we're talking about amulets that consist of uh, يعني, verses from the Quran. However, important to, 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 to make mention, those who do allow it, they say it has to be from the Quran and only the Quran. So that which consists of the Quran and other matters, because this is something we, you're going to see in يعني, some examples, that from these amulets, that which consists of verses of the Quran, multiple pieces of paper, one paper you'll see all verses from the Quran. But then the next one, some Quran, and then يعني, other affairs. يعني, names which are not recognized. Or even some names which are well-known names of the jinn. And then also, يعني, just a whole load of numbers. Now, and we touched on that in the previous uh, chapter. Now, now, and so the Sheikh, he says that this is what the evidence is they they uh, prove and al-wajib the shaykh he says that which is obligatory hasmu hadha al-bab wal qada alayh bil kulliyya saddan li dhara'i li dhara'i ash-shirk wa 'amalan bil adilla he says that which is obligatory is to shut down this bab hasm hadha al-bab to close that door of amulets which Yani contain verses from the Quran. Close that door. This is what the Shaykh is saying, that, that, which is obligatory. Um, and to, yani, to shut it down completely, to close the door, in order to prevent those means which lead to shirk. Naam. And so, scholars, they mention those who, who, who forbid amulets consisting of verses from the Quran, they say this is one of the reasons or two reasons which the Sheikh is mentioning here were amalan bil adilla that firstly the evidences point to that and the messenger of Allah وسلم, himself and the Sahaba didn't do as such they didn't do as such so even in that example we find that they would not do this, this, this action thirdly because it's sad لِذَرَعِ shirk, it cuts off the means which lead to shirk. Thirdly or fourthly, I can't remember which point we're on now, but also it, it makes way for the Quran because you find that these amulets consist of verses of the Quran, some verses, some of them even the whole Quran. The whole Quran. In, in, in very small uh, print, very extremely small print to the point where yeah, it's difficult for you to read it. And you find that this is imtihan, imtihan for uh, the, the mushaf and the verses, even if it's not the whole Quran, even the verses of the Quran. Yeah, and it, it puts the, the verses to trial. Yeah, and when it's placed on a child, when a child yeah, and is unaware of what this is, and, yeah, and his saliva falls on it, um, going to the bathroom, wearing these things. Um, it is يعني, also from this angle that the scholars, they say that it is haram. And fourthly, innovated. Innovated. Or fifthly, innovated. It is not an action from the action of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba. Now, um, so in final here, the uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, he, say, he said that وَلَا يَنْبَغِي تَعْلِقُ التَّمَائِمَ عَلَى الْأَوْلَادِ بَلْ the father or the mother or whoever كما عوض النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الحسن والحسين بأدعية التعوض يعني it is not befitting that a person that he places amulets and so on on his children rather he seeks protection uh, for them uh, with Allah um, as the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did so with Al-Hasan and Hussein, 
by making the uh, ad ad'ya, those du'as, uh, which um, yani involve seeking protection, at ta'awwudh. Anyone know which du'a the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he recited on Al Hassan and Hussein? Simple dua. And also has come yeah, with other wordings. And so these are the ad'iyah and the forms of ruqa and ruqya which are legislated and which we should yani, uh, recite on our children in order to protect them. Now. Now, and this is where the word taweez comes from. We hear our people say taweez. You know the root of this? Hmm? What's the root of this word, taweez? Yeah, but in Arabic. Naam. Ta'awwudh. Yani, it's ta'weez. Bil ayn. But you know, our people, they, don't, they can't say the ayn. So, taweez. But it's ta'weez from a'udhu. A'udhu billah. So that which they take as a protection, taweez, but yani ta'weez. Naam. So uh, again, we have sufficiency in that which has come in the Quran and the Sunnah. And we see the Messenger of Allah some teaching the Ummah. Yani that which would suffice them in seeking protection uh, for their children. Naam. Uh, and so the Imam he says that Al uh, Kitaba fil Warak, writing um, on paper. So these ruqya that uh, ruqa that they write on paper, um, or even on plates and so on. Fa'lahu um, ba'du salaf. He says that some of the salaf they did these things. Waruya an Ibn Abbas. It has been narrated from Ibn Abbas. However, that doesn't mean established. And it's narrated from them that they did this, but yeah, there are many of those who say, no, this is not established with authentic chains. So even that is questionable. So at the very least, we say this, when someone comes and says, well, some of the scholars allowed it, some of the scholars did it, we, we say, and it's not, that's not even affirmed in, yeah, with, with, with certainty. Now, so... Um, that which is Ola, no doubt, that which is better is to leave even that. Now, now, thereafter, the Imam he brings um, the next narration, and that is from Imam Ahmed um, from um, Ruwayfi' radiallahu anhu, قال, who said, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا رويفع نعم أو رويفع لعل الحياة ستطول بك فأخبر فأخبر الناس أن من عقد لهيته أو تقلد وترا أو استنجى برجيع دابة أو عظم فإن محمدا بريء منه أو رويفع it may be that you live for a long time so inform the people that whoever ties a knot in his beard or places a string or cord as a charm or cleans himself after relieving himself with the dung of animals or bones, then inform him that Muhammad is free from him. Now, now here a Sheikh Ibn Baz, he says, um, concerning, just very briefly, he doesn't comment on all of it, but he, he says about the tying uh, of a knot in the beard. He says this, um, the scholars have explained the reasons for this, a number of reasons uh, from that is tashabbuh bil kuffar is resembling the non-Muslims from the Nasara and so on, from the Christians and so on. Uh, and, and from them those who said because in it is tikabur, uh, yeah, and and, and uh, that which resembles the women, and it, it involves a man, yeah, and he, uh, having pride and so on, and resembling the action of women and so on in beautification. Um, 
Naam. And so the Sheikh he says, but however, this does not mean that a person should, uh, yani doesn't pay attention to his beard. Yani there's nothing wrong with a person looking after his beard and presenting his beard yani in a presentable manner and so on. Uh, and honoring the beard. Naam. Naam. As for uh, the matter of um, cleaning oneself with, with the dung of animal, of animals or bones, then there are ahadith that have come uh, prohibiting this um, and because uh, they are matters that do not purify or these things do not purify and in it likewise is re resembling the actions of the people of Jahiliyyah Naam. Uh, concerning or the shahid which is taken or the point of evidence which is taken from this particular hadith is uh, yeah, the one who places a string the one who places a string yeah, meaning this is why he brought this in this chapter here because that, that is the topic of this chapter Naam. and as for um, at the end of the hadith uh, that Muhammad وسلم, is free from him then uh, this shows to us that it is haram and it is a major sin it is a major sin because the likes of uh, this wording whenever the messenger of Allah وسلم, would m make such statements that Muhammad is free from him or uh, he is not from us and so on then these are terms which indicate that that action is a major sin now طيب. Uh, just a few more statements that the Imam he brings, this time from other than the Messenger of Allah وسلم, from يعني, the Tabi'een, and from Sa'id ibn Jubair, who said, from Sa'id ibn Jubair, who said, Man qata tamima, whoever cuts an amulet, or whoever cut an amulet from a person, kana ka'adli raqbah, then it is equal to freeing a slave. Naam. And that is followed by the statement of Ibrahim that the Imam he brings here, the final narration within this chapter. And Ibrahim being, anyone know which Ibrahim? An Nakhai. Ibrahim An Nakhai from the Tabi'een, from the students of Abdullah bin Mas'ud. So, a student of the companion, Abdullah bin Mas'ud. Naam. So, Ibrahim. Who said, Kanu yakrahun tamaim? And so this shows to us someone who goes back to the second generation, who was a student of the Sahaba. He says, Kanu yakrahun tamaim kulla kulla. They used to hate and detest the tamaim, the amulets, all of them. Min al Quran wa al Quran from the Quran. And from other than the from from other than the Quran, they hate, they they would detest all of them. Naam. So that is a, a, a strong evidence uh, pointing out that uh, the Salaf, yani, did not part, part participate or partake in these types of actions. Naam. That brings us to the end of that chapter, and fihi masail. The important matters we take from this chapter. Uh, the first of them is Tafsir al-Ruqa wa tamaim The explanation of al-Ruqa, incantations and amulets. We took the meaning of those things. Ruqa is what? Incantations is there, it's translated anyway. Incantations and amulets. Tamaim is amulets. Tayyib. Kedalik Tafsir al-Tiwala. The explanation of bewitchment. Tiwala. Uh, however, how did, the, how did the Imam explain it? Tiwala? How did he describe it? So that which they do by way of trying to bring about a spell, using a spell, trying to bring about a man and bring them together, bring a woman and man together. Naam. The third matter is that these three, all of them, are acts of shirk without exception. 
without exception. Meaning, if they involve shirk, so a ruqa which involves shirk, it is, it is, it is shirk. But there's detail, and the, that is explained now here by the following point, or the following matter, is that reciting incantations, ruqya, with words of truth, for seeking protection from the evil eye or from poisonous bites, then that is not from shirk. So that is exempted. Now, the fifth, and the tamima, إذا كانت من القرآن, that the amulet, or any amulet which consists of verses from the Quran, فقد اختلف العلماء, the scholars have differed. هل هي من ذلك أم لا? They differed. Is that from يعني, the amulets which are forbidden, considered as being shirk or not. That's what we took from this chapter. And we mentioned that which is the stronger position in them. No doubt. More so in the times that we live in. And the people who, who yani, are, 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 are present in our communities with the beliefs that they hold and being weak in Tawheed. Now, the sixth is... Uh, placing necklaces of string uh, around the animals against evil eye amounts uh, no, I think there's a typo there but amounts or uh, amounts to shirk yani, and it's from that it's from shirk and the ta'aliq al-awtar awtar the plural of water ala dawab on the animals anil ayn to protect from the evil eye, min dhalik is from that. The seventh, al waid al shadid, ala man ta'allaqa wataran, the severe threat directed to the one who hangs a bowstring. Severe threat. The eighth is, fadlu thawab man qata'a tamima min insan, the reward of a person who cuts off an amulet. Yani from, from a person or that which is uh, yani hung upon a person and the final one the ninth is that the speech of Ibrahim and Nakhai does not contradict that which is preceded uh, as he was referring to the companions of Abdullah bin Mas'ud meaning that although the, the Imam he ended with with the state his statement that the Salaf detested and hated amulets which consisted of the Quran and other than the Quran then although he, he brought this it doesn't contradict the fact that there were those there were those who yani, did allow it Naam. and so with that that is the end of that chapter and by way of examples as we mentioned um, just to show and this is for um, all of us um, and for those who may be studying these matters for the first time, um, it is easy to, يعني, to think and to believe that these affairs um, are not matters that we, يعني, we, we, we need to be concerned about because perhaps you live in a household where your parents, for the young ones, your parents, يعني, they teach you to heed and يعني, uh, it's easy to, to think that these matters are matters that used to take place يعني, many generations ago or in the past or يعني, in pre-Islamic times, times before the, 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 the messenger of Allah so some came, the, the, the mushrikeen, the Arabs would do. However, these, this example here shows to you that these, this is much closer to home. These are affairs that, the most, that our people, our family members, our relatives, our friends, our communities are afflicted by these things. And this, what you're going to see is an example that was sent to me just the other day, just the other week. Somebody who found in the, in the room of their mother these amulets and they became concerned. And so they asked, what is this uh, and is it allowed? And you're going to see examples. So again, here in Bradford, here in Bradford, Yani that which, unfortunately, the Muslims are afflicted by. And so, um, as they say, um, The one who sees, or 
just hearing and knowing and learning about these matters, being informed, is not like seeing it. When you see it for yourself, then and you see the extent of these matters and the reality of these matters. Now, and so, um, here an example, that which was found um, in the amulet. In fact, let me go to the, that's the picture there of the amulet. So an example, this is an example of how they come. Yeah, and these papers folded up, these miniature forms of paper folded up and placed in such amulets, which are then placed in uh, or, or worn around the neck or the arm and so on, the waist or whatever else they, uh, they, they um, wear them. Maybe, I don't know, any, anyone seen anything different? Ankle? Wrist. And this is not the only form. Sometimes you find them in the, yeah, in almost like a small metal capsule. Have you seen them? No, small, small metal capsules. Like a locket, nah, um, a locket and so on. Um, you know, I'm around the neck, wrist, arm, upper arm, ankles, maybe waist, Allah knows best. Yeah, and whatever suits their, or tickles their fancy. Um, so here is an example. Here's an example you see. Um, and again, you'll find within these papers, or on these papers, much of that which to the general person, yeah, and they look at and they see the basmala, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And so they see here, okay, what, from what can make out, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allah samad, lam yulid wa lam yulad, and so on. But even that, then it doesn't seem to be complete. Look at the order. Yani, huwa Allah ahad, Allah samad, lam yulid wa lam. Yani, at the bottom you see, ya hayu, ya qayyum, ya Allah. Which that on its parent may seem, Okay, there's nothing in that. But then you'll see examples. So, here now, as we alluded to last week, al-arqam, numbers. And so these people are those who combine between uh, various sciences. And we mentioned last week, anyone remember what? So we said about those who use numbers, they, they work with ilm, mother, ilm, Ilm al huruf the science of, of letters, the science of letters, they ascribe numbers to each letter. So every letter in the Arabic language, it has a specific number. And so they believe that they have value, yani these letters have a numeric value. And then so, for example, your name, take each letter, and each letter has a value that totals a sum. They'll take your name, take your mother's name, and both values from each name, total sum, multiply them together, you get this, minus, you get this, add this, add them together, you get this. Again, whatever tickles your fancy. Um, and whatever you want to know, they, 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 they tell you. And so they'll tell you how long you're going to live, how long... Or, uh, how long you're going to live how many children you're going to have if you're going to be happy you're going to be sad and these these affairs so they work with ilm al huruf they work with astrology with yani, the science of the stars and so on and greek mythology and all of these things that which is uh, yani, uh, steeped uh, or, or yani, uh, naam, steeped in, in shirk a shirk naam here, another example. So, you can see a name appearing. Uh, you can see in the corners. Anyone make up that, that word or that, that name? Those who can read Arabic? Okay, maybe you, there's, in the next one you'll be clear or the next. You, you can see it here. So, the Basmala. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Bihaq. Bihaq Jibreel. Through the right of Jibreel. Ya. Mother? Huh? What's this? Is this the name of Allah? You see? See what they do? Ya budduh, they say. Yani. Again, names you don't recognize. But look how they get in there. That which is said the name of one of the, ma the major jinn. One of the major uh, uh, yani, devils from the jinn. 
Naam. Again, Arqam. And then, finally, a full page dedicated to Budduh. Naam. So, again, example. Here, example. And this, you find this, my brothers, on... I'm not saying you go and find it. Stay away from it. <laughs> but as an example. And you see this in the houses of the Muslimin. Again, uh, that which they hold as taweez, ta'weev, protection. So a combination of verses from the Quran coupled with all of these numbers. All of these numbers and these people who bring these numbers and yani, put this together. They are... They are uh, they indulge themselves into those sciences which have nothing to do with Islam in the least. Now, this is not from the way of Rasulullah, the Sahaba, the Salaf, or the Imams, none of them, that they would busy themselves with numbers. That they would busy them, no, no, you, you, nowhere do we find this in the Quran, nor the Sunnah, or the uh, yani, the statements and actions of the Sahaba. Now, and so you can see, yani, by so an example at the bottom, by keeping this dua in your house or in your shop, wealth, favor, and happiness always remain with you, and there will be no fear or poverty. Now, uh, and finally, uh, look at the price on that. Look at the price on that, and look at the description: extreme tawiz, extreme. This is not, yani, it's for the heavyweights. It's an extreme one. Yani, uh, there, are, there, are very, there, there are different grades. But this is Daraja Al-Ula. Yani, the highest grade. You know, just like you see, you know, you see in, the, uh, in the picture, you've got the, uh, the, uh, the Utur, the Itar, the perfumes. Perfume comes in grades. Ud comes in grades. Yeah, and he is an extreme. Yeah, and he tawiz. Yeah, and he, this, according to them, is extreme. It'll work. Magic for attracting true love. Nah. Uh, 3K? Where's that? Oh, 3K, subhanAllah. 3, 3,000. Look at it. The key for total success and so on. 1,100. Uh, nah. Now, 1,140 pounds with yeah, a discount. That's after discount, so they apply a discount from 1,900. Yeah? Does buy one get one free? Free deliveries, all of that. Allah musta'an. This is unfortunate that the Ummah yeah, uh, has fallen to yeah, uh, be in prey yeah, uh, to these matters. And look how these magicians. And these evildoers, they, they beautify these matters and yeah, and make it so that you don't even have to leave your home. Click a button and it's there. Click a button and it's there. And uh, what, the, the, no surprise that it's possible that many of them are not even kuffar. Some, this may be some Nigerian Christian in, in Nigeria, knowing that the Muslims are, 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 are steeped in this and weak to this degree that they can make some serious money from them Allah must stand so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he protects the Muslims from these affairs but we show this as an example um, but upon us is to first and foremost to learn these affairs for ourselves learn a tawheed that which affects a person's tawheed and, and yani, diminishes and makes weak a person's tawheed that which yani, can lead him to shirk yani, whether that's minor shirk or major shirk and that likewise we teach those who are beloved to us and those who are يعني, dear to us and the people as a whole in general. وفق الله الجميع لما يحبه ويرضى وصلى الله عليه وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. الله